So as we all know that in the new one series and the four door three series of the new generation, those cars have ditched the unique rear wheel drive that they used to have in the compact class and gone for the usual flavor of front wheel drive driven cars or all wheel drive. But with our two series coupe, the team behind this are true heroes because they've served this small niche of petrol heads like you and me who love our small compact rear wheel drive cars. And three things that they insisted in in the new two series was still maintaining rear wheel drive, was to have a completely unique design compared to the rest of the compact class, and finally, to maintain the lovely six cylinder engine that is so BMW at the top of the halo cars for this range. And they achieved all of that, and like I said, proper heroes for all of us. So BMW is still out here fighting for that small little niche of us who love and lust after the small two-door sports coupes. And why wouldn't they? Because they had some of the most iconic in all history. So it's no exaggeration to say that the new 2 Series may well be their most important modern release. And it's a car that's really evolved and matured, even compared to the brilliant last generation. Today we're looking at the 240i xDrive. It is a fully loaded machine that I've done a load of miles in, got loads to feed back to you about this car. I'm gonna show you everything under the skin, how it links more to three and four series rather than the one series, almost like a smaller version of the higher end cars, which is great. We'll talk about the future M2 as well. So let's unpack absolutely everything today about the brand new two series in this, the 240i xDrive. So guys, today's episode of RBR has been kindly sponsored by Air for Life, who make air sanifiers for both your car and your home. This is the little device, this is the one that plugs into your car, and this uses NASA-developed ionization technology. Now what these actually do in reality is pretty amazing. Once you plug it in, these will eradicate 99.9% .9 of bacteria and viruses, not just in the air, but on surfaces and seats as well including stuff like coronavirus, all right? This can also help negate the symptoms of allergies, asthma, hay fever as well. And perhaps what's even more useful just for daily car guys like us is that it can remove odors from the car as well. You plug it in and an hour later, it'll get rid of pet odors, cigarette, food odors, etc. It's super easy to use. You simply just plug it into your 12 volt or you can use the USB switch at the back. And that's it, there's no maintenance, there's no filters to change. This is a super useful device to have in your arsenal as a car user, or even more if you're anything to do with public transport, right? It's like taxi driving, car sharing, car rental companies, you guys need to have this. It's gonna be a game changer. Now, of course, as an RBR viewer, you always get a good discount, so you will get 25% off, use the code RBR on that link below, or, there's a second option with them. They've just opened for the first time ever, private investment all through Crowdcube. And all you need to do is buy 10 or more shares and they'll give you a free one anyway. And the details of how to do all of that is in the description below. Guys, many thanks for always supporting our sponsors. Now back to the episode. So guys, let's first address the elephant in the room. This is not your normal surroundings for RBR. That's because I moved, RBR HQ has moved. I'm building a whole bespoke place for the channel I'm gonna show you that on the channel as well, being built, it's gonna be super exciting. You know, me being a superhero nerd, it's gonna be incredible. This is my temporary space, so this is the last video that you're gonna be seeing, some B-roll from the old and famous drive of RBR. Anyway, let us get on with the two series, or really, it's more of a three series coupe, to be honest, in this new generation, because unlike the last, this borrows wholesale from the three and four series, from the platform. Indeed, our 240i's really just wholesale takes everything from the 440i coupe in arguably a more handsome body form. So like I said, this is probably the most important modern BMW because BMW's history is so ingrained with the sporty two-door coupe, starting all the way back with the BMW 02. BMW say that the new T-Series kind of links to that car in design with the really bold and singular front headlights. I think that's pretty much it and the fact that it's the smallest in the range but you get the idea that it's linking back to that the more famous car was of course the e30 which is really a predecessor more to this than the 4 series which is so huge now that of course really started the trend of the small two-door four-seat sport bmw 
and of course, you know, the M3 of that generation, so iconic. But really, the predecessor to this car directly would be our E82 1 Series Coupe. Now, this was a revolution at the time. It was a rear-wheel drive, small, compact, two-door, four-seat car that really finally harkened back to the E30 in the modern generation. Um, it still had a lovely six-cylinder engine, some nice, naturally aspirated, smaller engines as well. Indeed, the rest of the 1 Series back then, including the hatchbacks, all rear-wheel drive, really unique. And then we had the lovely Halo 1M car. So this was a time for BMW enthusiasts to get excited about compact cars because they had proper BMW DNA in a smaller package. And it sold so well, unsurprisingly. Then we had the F22, which was, of course, such a well-known generation. Even in its simplest form, the coupe, so much more handsome than its predecessor. We had a 240i xDrive in that, which kind of links to our car today, but otherwise mainly rear-wheel drive. A lot of the tech was still one series, but then when it came to halo cars, oh my God, our M2, what a car. Even the original one, fantastic engine. Probably better than the engine that followed later into it from the M3 and the M4. Now, although this was called the two series, it was still very much taking all the tech from the one series. The only reason the name was changed because now all BMW two-door coupes were having even numbers, so two, four, and eight. But the tech, the trim, etc., even in the high-end M2, very much still one series. And we kind of forgave it that because it drove so fantastically well. You didn't care about the plastics and whatnot inside the interior. And of course, we headlined in the end with the fantastic M2 CS, which I owned and did so many miles in. I, I miss this car so much. I had to sell it, as you guys know, to afford a much uh, more expensive car, but I still miss it today. It was really a complete sports car. Then we come to today's car, and this is a massive, massive change in terms of technology. Like I said, this is more of a three series coupe because the new two series coupe shares basically no parts with the four door two series lineup. Instead, it uses the CLA platform that we have the three series and four series sitting on. So this is that rear wheel drive platform with longitudinally mounted engines rather than transversely mounted engines doing front wheel drive. And when we look at our 240i, like I said, it takes all of the chassis technology and the engine and everything from our 440i in this smaller car. So we have that same three litre inline six engine, 374 brake horsepower, 500 Newton meters, and a zero to 60 of 4.3 seconds, which brings it head to head with the previous generation M2s. These are fantastic performance figures for like the entry level flagship performance variant of this car. Now in terms of suspension, we've got increased negative camber on our front. We've got lift related dampers as standard. M adaptive electronic dampers are an additional option, but you can option them, which is great. We've got X drive, which is mostly rear bias, but can send up to 50% of the power to our front and our M Sport diff on the rear is absolutely standard as well. In terms of aerodynamics, we've got active flaps on the front, and in terms of aero, it reduces the lift by 50%, which is pretty impressive. So all in all, essentially, like I said, 440i condensed into a smaller car with a totally different design, both to four series and to anything one or two related on the other side. This is a totally unique design. Let's talk about the design a little bit. It's been Marmite for a lot of people, particularly the rear. We'll get onto that in a second. Ignoring the rear, I think this is the most handsome new BMW. I think it's gonna age fantastically well. Uh, the reason for that is, I think it's a bit of that Chris Bangle flavor in the sense that it horrifies you so much at the start, but it's so ahead of its time in some of the things it's doing that it's just gonna age well. I think it has a lot of muscularity. In fact, when you look at this car in general compared to the normal, remember this is the normal version, right? When you compare it to the normal two series of the F22, that looks so plain. Whereas this looks, I would dare say, as aggressive as the previous M2 and just in terms of its body mass, you know, and its curvature and its, its width. So there's a lot of positives to take away from this. So hopefully it drives as well as it looks. In terms of what's coming later, the M2 maintains so much important BMW DNA. There's still a manual available. Of course, you'll have the automatic as well. It's got a totally different design to this. So BMW M have gone to town. Yes, we've seen lots of part leaks, etc. That's all in the past now. We're gonna be talking about this car 
very soon. It's going to be the M car to have, undoubtedly. I'm not going to bore you too much on it today. Now, design is a massive part of what they fought for in the 2 Series, and that's not just on the outside, it's also on the inside. So let me bring you in closer and show you some of the exterior and then the incredible interior. 2 Series, I thought it'd be nice to actually look around it properly with you guys a bit closer, because when you're walking around a little bit, you get to appreciate the structure of a car a bit more. And what BMW have done, like I said, this is not an evolution of 2 Series design. It's more of a revolution. They're taking more risks. Look at small things, like for example, you have the light structure here. It's like someone's taken a blade and cut this part of the body out and then stuck the light in, which is so cool. And equally here, it's really sharp lines. Whereas Mercedes, you know, getting rid of lines everywhere. BMW adding really interesting cuts and everything. They're not gonna to be to everyone's taste, but it makes things that much more interesting. Then look at the grill, active aero within the kidney here. And it's a really big grill still, but a bit more traditional, obviously, in the way that it looks. And all of that, I don't know, for me, that front end, I think that's so mean. And what's lovely about this is that 240i is gonna to be totally different to the M2. And that's nice as well, because 2 Series already different to 3 and 4 completely on design. Um, then it also gets to differentiate to M2, which is cool. Then you come around the side and again, similar story, more of a revolution than an evolution. So we've got nice strong shoulders, which are, M, you know, which are 2 Series traits, but stuff like the door handles here, you know, they're lovely. Look at those. That's really nice and it's so comfortable. It doesn't feel like say the SL or the S-Class ones that you just think it's gonna break. It's got a lovely, and again, cut into it, you know, like w almost like with a blade. Really sharp line here. Side sills, massive, totally different to the last two series. They're lovely, really, really nice. And the rear, so controversial, isn't it? I actually think it works really well. All it needs is another, is a spoiler, like instead of here, here and protruding that way and it would look great maybe i mean jamie mentioned that maybe the diffuser could be a little bit different to take the eye off it i i think it's all right but m performance parts etc could sort that out but the more you look at this particularly from that kind of from that view over there the three quarter i think you then begin to appreciate it i, I think it looks fine if anything it keeps things so interesting because it's I don't like evolution in every single car. To have a car that's just written things from zero again makes total sense for me. So this, I think, is a win in terms of design. This is a really nice interior. What an upgrade for two series customers in this thing. It's like they've ripped literally the four series interior out and shoved it straight into this two. It looks brilliant. Compare it directly to even my M2 CS, you just see a massive, massive change. I mean, that looks like two or three generations behind now. Whereas this looks like, you know, it's comparable to even the 8 Series interior with so much of like the vents and the switch gear, the steering wheel, the quality in terms of the materials all being shared with higher up models. Certainly the structure, which is, you know, half the game, but it's nice that the material quality, I mean, even the the rough plastic um, that annoys me on a lot of cars just looks a bit more leathery here and almost blends seamlessly into the cheaper leather being used here in the two. It's a really good first impression, I think. Now, let's break it down a little bit further. Some big firsts here for two series. We've got BMW Live Cockpit, so the latest operating system with a nice curved display here. It's not too dissimilar in size to what I had in my M2CS. Um, and it functionally works in a pretty similar way as well. So it's very logical in the way that the system works. Accessing the system, for example, the now extended ambient lighting, which is so nice in this car. Um, I, let's talk about that first. You've got backlit door cards here, which is fantastic. Look at that. And they change with the ambient lighting. It looks even better at night. If you have the door open while the car's running, this will actually flash. So let's say you haven't closed your door quite properly, you will know immediately because the lights within that backlit panel will start flashing. And then at night, generally the ambience of the ambient lighting is nice. You've got a nice selection of colors here as well. You know, again, all of this new to two series really brings the car up a notch. And that's lovely. I love the door card in general. 
lots of Hofmeister kinks, which is this thing that you see on the C pillar outside as well, all over every BMW interior these days. But it's, you know, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of cuts, there's, you know, the backlit panel, etc. Compare that to how I was complaining about the recent C-Class uh, door card being too boring. This is the other end of the spectrum where they've got a lot going on and it looks quite good. The system here is very easy to use. Like I said, it, if you're used to BMW systems, then it's exactly as it's been in the past. You get your sports displays, you can configure your driving modes. One thing that's really good, you get two configurable driving modes. One is your sport configuration. So you can have your own individual sport as we've always had where you've got you know, your damping, your steering, engine, transmission, etc. But you also have individual for something called Eco Pro, okay? And this is trying to get you to drive in a more economic way so you get better fuel consumption, etc. It regulates your seat heating and other bits and pieces in order to get you, you know, the most economical driving experience possible. I also love the fact that you have your car's actual spec here within the system. Same when you enter the car and you get the lovely welcome screen. You're greeted here with a Thunder Knight purple M240i, which is great. I love that. Little things like that I absolutely love. The steering wheel, I'm not a massive fan of it, as you guys know. I'd much prefer the newer ones that they brought into the absolute latest uh, two-actor Tourer, for example. That looks a lot better. I would have loved to have seen that in here. But it's still nice. The great thing is you've got a leather-covered steering uh, airbag here, which a lot of the rivals don't even bother doing. Napa leather on your sports steering wheel as well, which is great. This car comes with a heated steering wheel, paddles nice and big as well. You know, this is all nice. Driver's own, bit of a disappointment. Um, much prefer the graphics that you get in the newer cars like the iX, etc. This is a bit of a letdown. It's, you know, last, feels like last generation now. Hardly any configurability, you've only got maps in the middle and it changes a little bit between comfort and sport and that's about it. What you find inside the actual M models is much better but you know it's a full digital display which the two series hasn't benefited from yet so for a two series customer again you know you're matching three series etc which is great debuting here in two series is the heads up display so again big upgrade sports seats come as standard in the two series as well so these exact ones here you can see you've got the m logo up top nice and comfortable not dissimilar to what i had in the m2 actually and the other cool thing is you've got easy entry exit for opening and closing this for the passengers to get in the rear. The rear, nice and spacious. Kids very happy in the back. But look, you can also get car seat in the back very easily, like I used to have um, my two-year-old sitting in the back. Um, and we went on a road trip, in fact. He was very happy sitting in there, lots of leg room, etc. You get pretty much as much space in the 4 Series in the back, and I think more than in the 8 Series. So we'll talk about this whole thing of the 2, 4, and the 8 existing together and why this is probably the pick of the bunch. But yeah, the rear seats, as I've always found with 2 Series, surprisingly spacious. Boot is nice and large, you get lots of luggage, prams, etc. in there. It's nice and big for like a two-door sports coupe. I don't like this trim here. Um, this is the one thing I'm not a fan of. It, it's just, it lets down the entirety of the interior. Um, Nappa leather, merino leather would be nicer on the seats if I'm nitpicking. Maybe this fake leather should have also been on the top of the dash. That would have really finished things off and on the lower half. But it's not as notable, as I said, as in other cars. In terms of storage, you've got mobile phone charging, wireless charger here. Weirdly, USB-A here. Strange, in front of the two cup holders. And in here, you have got USB-C, which is good. Um, so you got to, you know, if you haven't got one, then you've got the other, which is pretty decent. One thing that's interesting is the shortcut buttons that you BMW nutcases still exist here. You know, this is nice to see. I've, I've kind of... Looks like an old friend to me now, I'm quite welcoming of these because um, you can set them to whatever you want, you know. So they're there, they're very analog, they're very from the past of BMW. How long will they survive now? They're not in the new 3 Series anymore, so covet them while you can. So overall, a massive update for 2 Series customers. Genuinely, if you blindfolded me and put me in this car, I think I was in a 4, which is, you know, there's no higher praise. But you kind of, again, you, you're expecting this when you're paying that much more for a vehicle like just the two series right so it's good that they're giving you bang for buck in that sense you know owners are going to be very happy with this now let's start the car we're going to do that in sport plus because actually sport plus sounds a damn near sight better than starting it normally it's lovely you get some nice little you know pops etc revs there's no rev limiter and it's still you know the revs aren't that exciting
Anyway, let's get to the main event. Is this still a sporty two-door coupe? Let's go out for a drive and have a look. We're gonna first launch control it and see just how quick this is because I can give you a spoiler. This thing is bloody quick off the line. Right guys, no messing around. Let's put this car straight into Sport Plus. Like I said, double tap of Sport button to get into Sport Plus. Let's launch control it and see what does this do. First of all, zero to 60. Now in order to try and activate launch control, I've turned the DSC off, put it in manual mode, Sport Plus, etc. All the stuff you do in M3 and M4, yet this car doesn't ever seem to say launch control activated. Either way, I seem to be getting the fastest speeds with this, so let's try it now. That is so quick. Um, as you can see here, measured at 3.8 seconds, which is what, 0.5 seconds faster than the official figures? I've also tested it at 3.9, consistently doing that speed, so really impressive. Of course, we have to give credit to the X-Drive system to that, which of course, on the one side makes the car heavier, but on the other side gives us great traction, especially off the line. As you can see, I mean, 3.8 seconds, that is flipping fast. We kept saying, you know, the performance of this 240i is so close to the original M2, and it really is, if not, it's faster. I mean, I struggle to get those kind of times out of my CS. Let's be honest, you guys have seen the videos. Um, so, in terms of pure speed, the 240i has that nailed down in the x -Drive. I do wonder how much the upcoming rear-wheel drive top level of the non-M2 2 Series will be like when it comes to a 0 to 60. How much will it suffer in comparison? I don't think it'll be that different. And as I'll discuss as we go through this, Perhaps the benefits of the rear-wheel drive will outweigh the fact that you have a little bit less speed. But now, let's talk about first impressions while driving this car. First impressions here are, this is feeling a much more grown-up car than the previous two series. Um, it actually reminds me quite a bit of my N2CS in the way that I really liked how the suspension was sorted in that car. You know, where it was dynamic, but it still had that comfort that you just didn't expect out of a car with the CS badging on it. This feels very much like 4 Series, very much like 8 Series in the way that it still kind of cosets you while maintaining, you know, fairly nimble on its feet. Your first 100 yards impression is if you were blindfolded, you're sitting in a 440i. And then when you're not blindfolded, you're also sitting in a 440i. I mean, this is such bang for buck. And it kind of confuses me, why do you have the 4 Series still? when the two is really, really so good in terms of luxury, comfort, um, you know, quality of materials, etc. I'm not trying to knock down the 4 Series or the 340i. You guys know that I love those cars, but to have all that quality in a 2 Series is something I'm not used to having owned a couple of M2s. This looks so much nicer, so much nicer than my M2. And I know I keep saying that, but I have to double down on that, particularly when I include the suspension element, because it is just really nice. The horrible roads here. I took the new C-Class on here not long ago, and it juddered and it juddered and juddered, particularly across these corners here, there. Whereas this 2 Series is pretty much soaking it up. Of course, this car has got slightly better adaptive suspension than your standard 2 Series, because BMW have hacked around with it. But either way, the effect of it is really comfortable. Now you have to understand how important that is because these cars are expensive now, okay? And like I said in the C-Class review, when you're paying that much money for an entry-level car, essentially, you are really expecting good suspension, good dynamism, and good luxury. Because if these car makers want to take the piss, frankly speaking, on pricing, then they have to provide things in lieu of, and BMW are here with the 2 Series. You are getting, instead of like a dumbed-down anything, you're not, you're getting the best that a 2 Series can be in the package that it is. And all of that, to be honest, was in Sport Plus mode. So if I put it into comfort, it's even better. And I'm really sorry that I'm starting a sports cars review talking about comfort and suspension, because it's not something that I was expecting. In comfort, it's even better, and it deals with things even better than it, of course, does in Sport Plus. And then you've got Eco Pro, which was brilliant. I took this car on a trip to Chester, uh, up towards Liverpool, etc. Um, we absolutely loved it as a family in the car. Motorway, I was easily topping, you know, 35 mpg uh, there and back, which in a little sports car like this, you're more than happy with. You know, that's brilliant, particularly with fuel prices these days. 
yeah, as a daily really good. Now, enough about that. Sport Plus. Let's give it some beans. It's a lovely engine, the M96. We know that already. We've seen it in the 440i. We've seen it in the 340i. It is a lovely, characterful engine. I have found it to be a little bit laggy in this, particularly from the off. Maybe not enough torque in the lower end, but once you get going, it is, you know, a really responsive, nice sounding BMW engine. Gearbox is your usual flavor of the eight speed torque converter. It shifts fairly decently, you know, for a torque converter box. And we're quite used to it in the BMWs now. Um, and you do get some nice sounds as you start playing through the gears, but there's not really any pops and bangs, etc. But the gearbox is nice. It's, you know, for a 240i, responsive enough, and it doesn't discourage you from using the paddles. So the engine is nice, the gearbox is lovely as well. You know, it does more than adequate job, and, and then you really start to have some fun as you begin to pile up speed, but then you come to handling, and I was so impressed with how the M3 xDrive managed to negate the numbing feeling that xDrive cars have with their steering, but the 240i doesn't benefit from any of the stiffening, the extra struts, etc. that that car does, and you've got the typical kind of numbness coming through the steering wheel. It's not as bad as some of the xDrives in the past, and that numb feeling, like I always say, it kind of discourages you from kind of pushing on even quicker, because you're having to guess where the wheels are, you know, rather than knowing for sure, and that's really annoying. The other thing is you begin to feel the weight of this car, okay? You really do. And of course, you know, at 1755 kg, that's hardly surprising. The 2 Series amazingly begins to feel more like a GT car in that regard, uh, rather than a little sports coupe, which of course is problematic for it. I would love to drive this upcoming rear wheel drive one because I think it would fix a lot of these problems. The steering would automatically be better based on my experience. It, it would be a little bit lighter as well. I think the suspension, etc., everything else would be fairly similar. Um, but it would just sort these issues out on the, on the handling where I'm just not feeling the confidence, you know? I think I'm being a bit more damning on the handling because I'm so used to, A, my own M2s, and then the 2 Series just being the epitome of two-door coupe handling at BMW. What you perhaps lose on the extra weight of the car and the addition of the extra weight of the you gain in the fact that this is now an all year round car, particularly in the UK. You gain from the incredible speed and traction that the X Drive affords you. And then, of course, I love the breadth of ability of this car. Compared to the old 2 Series and the M2, etc., it's got so much more breadth of ability on the comfort side, not just in terms of suspension, the way this car feels when you're driving it normally, but also the interior ambiance, the quality the ability to do long journeys in it. This is something that 2 Series, you just wouldn't pick one for that job where you viably can now. But it's undoubted that it's matured. In this day and age, with the price of these cars, with everything costing that much more, they have to be more. And the 2 Series is more. It's undoubtedly a better car in terms of breadth of ability, particularly on the comfort side. It's genuinely fast, as you saw. And if you want to drive it dynamically, genuinely when you get into a flow of it, and you begin to understand what the car is doing, with its body control and its steering. It is genuinely fun to drive as well. So guys, that's your 240i. I'm excited to try other variants of the 2 Series, particularly that upcoming king of 50 years of M, I think it's gonna be, the new M2 is gonna be spectacular. That's not far away. If you've enjoyed this episode of RBR, please do like, and most of all, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.